You almost certainly use this guy's app on a daily basis. Let me tell you his story and let's have you guess which app that is. Jan was born into a Jewish family in communist Ukraine in 1976, into a household with no running water. His parents rarely spoke on the phone in fear of it being tapped. The family lived in constant worry of the secret police. The walls had ears and Jan's family could not speak freely. Along with his mother and grandmother, Jan immigrated to the U.S. in 1992. He began to work as a cleaner in a grocery store, while his mother took up babysitting to make ends meet. But soon thereafter, she was diagnosed with cancer, and they were forced to live off welfare and food stamps. Jan taught himself computers by buying manuals from the local store, returning them, though, after he was finished reading them. He didn't have enough money to buy a computer before the age of 19, and they were also too poor to afford phone calls to Jan's father back in the Ukraine. Communication is at the core of our society. That's what makes us human, Jan is quoted as saying. His father planned to join them in America, but sadly died in 1997 before ever seeing his family again. And then tragically, his mother died from cancer just three years later. Jan began his technical career as a software engineer at Yahoo. Afterward, when he applied to Facebook for his next position, he was rejected. So, together with his friend Brian, with whom he worked at Yahoo, he developed the idea for launching an app, an instant messaging service to enable friends and family to communicate. One that would be simple, reliable, and free. Yes, that's exactly the type of technology he wished he had when he was younger. Then, on his birthday, February 24th, 2009, WhatsApp was born. The company's first office consisted of two cubicles in another company's warehouse. Employees had to wrap blankets around themselves for warmth during the cold winter months. But after some early glitches and technical challenges, WhatsApp rapidly began taking off without any marketing spend. It was becoming a viral success. Then, in 2014, Facebook offered to purchase the company for $19 billion. Yes, just five years after he was rejected for a position at that very same company, Facebook offered to purchase them for $19,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000
Are we cowardly hiding? Are we becoming resentful? Or are we working to transform these very challenges into golden opportunities? We do not choose our adversity, but we do choose our response. Whether we decide to help a friend, spear out an organization, or even launch a $19 billion messaging app, may we be blessed with the wisdom, strength, and resources to use our challenges as springboards to affect positive change in the world.